Hey, everybody. Welcome to Murder Hobo, Inc. This is the Cred Campaign. I am Kyle, the DM. And oh, I'm sorry, that was a bit of a misdirect on my part. This is actually Between the Rolls, where we're going to talk a little bit about what happened last week. We're going to talk about what's going to happen this week. We're going to talk about some random subject where we will enlighten you all with our wonderful DM knowledge and whatever Carol has to offer. Oh, thanks a lot. Asshole. You're welcome. You're such an asshole. This is for mature audiences only, by the way. Because God knows someone has to be. On being vulgar. You know what? I was talking to Carol the other day and she was like, let's go, Brandon. And I'm like, oh my God, uh. Carol. <laughs> what? Keep that vulgar language uh. to yourself. <laughs> but enough about Carol. Let's talk about me. Hey, I'm your uh, Parkway <laughs> host tonight. Kyle, I am the DM of the Cred Campaign. Cthulhu rises, everyone dies. On occasion, I will uh, offer wonderful insight on this very show tonight. Uh, there's an over-under on whether I do that tonight. <laughs> and on occasion, I will participate in one-shots, although I am brilliantly and maniacally planning the doom of my players, so you don't see me there very often. Uh, let's go over and introduce... The one, the only. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Oh. Okay, Carol. Fine. You didn't even you gotta, do. You gotta hog the spotlight. I get it. Go ahead, no. Carol. Introduce yourself. J- just Tell us pick. about your mini painting, Twitch. Just pick and be done. Jeez, man. Hi, everyone. My name is Carol. I'm a what? How do I usually do? Say a longtime gamer, casual GM, and commission paint mini painter who has her own Twitch. Where I paint minis. I, I painted a roof last night. Mm. Um, and my Twitch channel is Muses underscore touch uh, Otherwise you can find me On the Craig campaign um, Hopefully not dying And definitely going crazy So Definitely <sighs> dying Definitely dying Maybe not Probably. Yeah. No no that's already That's <laughs> already a definitive thing I picked up an insanity So she's definitely gone crazy Gone crazy. Gotta go out on that of one. Her mind. Oh. And uh, DMs uh, know how to smell blood in the water, and that's why Frank knows that Carol's PC is about to die. Frank, why don't you introduce yourself? It's probably true. Folks, if you uh, don't know who I am, <coughs> thanks for joining us. This is your first time. If you do know who I am, thanks for coming back. I appreciate it. Uh, I'm one of the Hobo Wranglers on this show, and oh, I will be doing Cacophony this Thursday, as well as a one-shot on Saturday. So if you're interested in a little bizarre urban problem, check us out on Thursday. But if you want wilderness, that's Saturday. Back to you, Kyle. All right. Well, before we start talking about last week's shows, let's give you a whole feel. Follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our YouTube archive if you want to talk about some cool D&D subjects including some of the stuff going on tonight or if you want to know the secrets on how i plan on killing my players hit us up on discord if you want to buy some cool awesome swag like phone cases uh you can buy curtains shower curtains you buy Um, cred you can buy a cred shirt you can buy a cred sweatshirt comes with a child it does oh yeah it lurks all the time that was creepy uh (laughs) Gosh. You never uh, wear you, it, Kyle. Uh, the never... thing is, I wear it every single day when I'm not on this show. <laughs> <laughs> and I spill things quite often. And <laughs> it honestly looks like something <clears throat> came up from the deep, tried to grab me, and I had to fight it off. And it's just stains of horrible, awful things. Uh, <laughs> if you guys would like to uh, listen to a podcast instead of seeing our beautiful faces, and missing all those physical gags, which honestly, oh my gosh, like these that. people can't. T- Yo, whoa, 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 Carol, put down that let's go Brandon sign. That's terrible. There, you, there's two for you then. <laughs> you, oh, you got two of them. Oh my goodness. I two. I, I oh. don't think if I could do it with my toes, I could have four, but yeah. Oh, you can't do that with your toes? I can do that. No. With my toes. But yeah, moving sure. on, we'd like to thank our sponsors, <coughs> uh, Pirate Dog Dice, uh, for when you're rolling like shit, Pirate Dog Dice. 
uh, proof you can polish a turd and turn it into a beautiful d20. Uh, just don't roll a one with that, because if you do roll a one, you are going to need the help of Adventure Sense covering up that smell. Uh, Adventure Sense, whether you're going through the dungeons, through the sewers, into the ancient libraries, or just having a drink down a <laughs> pipe, or if you have to use the bathroom onto Carol's choleric fence post, uh, get Adventure Sense. They really bring in that 4D smell of what adventure is. Nice. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. You can a lot of segues, smell bro. the adventures. I don't know. Uh, anyway, uh, brought to my attention earlier, November is the month where people tend to write a story and you got to write a chapter every single day. Let me just stop you right there. Before you start continuing on tonight, order the Shine Project PDF. Take a gander at that, and it is going to help you write an amazing story, asking you a bunch of questions you forgot to ask yourself. They're coming out with a Kickstarter, too, where if you're a DM and you want to know what questions you forgot to ask yourself, they're going to have a shine project for that as well. I know nice. I'm going to be first in line to beg Frank to get me a copy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I waited too early on that one. We would have had a spit take. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, you know, you pimp, I say you pimp them so much, maybe they'll just send you one. If that no. is true. No, they probably wouldn't. It's you mean you want us to give a free copy to the guy who snorted our products and nearly died <laughs> off <Twitch>? Yeah, <laughs> <Hell amen. no. laughs> We had to pay extra money just to put a warning label on our packages maybe if you ask nice you can play test it Ooh, there we go Ooh. uh and finally yeah how to rpg with your cat how to rpg with your cat it has been a funded kickstarter seven billion times over but honestly go ahead and see if you can donate a little bit more or get your hands on it early uh because there are stretch goals that could be obtained <laughs> Isn't it close? Well, it is it's close. Yes. Do they do? Are they are they going to do a late? Do you either of you know if they're going to do a late pledge thing? Uh, I do I, not know that. I, I, I will so. ask them. Though. Uh, someone has won the cat scratching post dice tower. <laughs> Sorry, it sucks to be you. Uh, and uh, yes, they are working. That's on who Caitlin's. won it. Sucks to be you. Sucks to be you. Yeah. No. On Some Twitter, people like that to sucks be, to be you. That sucks to be you. <laughs> Almost got a spit take there. I wonder if that's a Twitter handle. <laughs> I want to find out. Well, we're going to tag him on this show tonight, and we'll see if he likes us or not. Uh, I think after that, that's all to be said, other than uh, February 14th, Valentine's Day, uh, Murder Hobo Con 2. Um, we are going to steal your heart away and your money for charity. Uh, so... If you're interested in that, keep uh, following us on Twitter and, you know, we'll give you updates as they come in with the uh, awesome stuff. Kyle, I've got an update. Uh, sucks to be you has 99 followers. And, <laughs> He's got more followers than me. And they're in Cleveland. They joined in January 2009. <laughs> so sucks to be you. Oh, my Congratulations. God. Congratulations. <laughs> Wait, when did they join? <coughs> January 2009. You know oh. what? That might be an old Twitter account of mine because I was living in Cleveland at the time. Well, it's apparently Cleveland sucks city. Uh, yeah, and does, yeah. uh, sucks to be you blog.com. So, you know, oh, that's I'm going to give them a follow for us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I got to log in. I'll follow them later. Oh, All Lord. right, before we go on, what's going on this week? We've got to talk about last week and let's so travel back in the way back time machine and let's talk about last Thursday, the cred campaign where our players finally got out of the maze. No, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We get out of the maze, but we're still in the lava tunnels. Yeah. We may so, be uh, there forever. What what the hell happened? And nothing what good. Happened? That's what, no, actually, one good thing did happen, actually. Yeah. I'm trying to remember how it started. Do you remember how it started? I remember. You managed to get away from the creature that was being all weird. And immediately, the, uh, you ended up in a cavern 
where two guests were snoring mm-hmm. after fornicating. Ah, God damn. I uh, mean, that was, that was my favorite fuck. part. Was that, that your was... favorite part? Oh, favorite wait, part. wait. You're, you're full of shit. Your favorite part wasn't me. Uh, oh, Any no. I already, I, already, I already made. No, I already <clears> did that <throat> last session. I picked up the insanity last. No, this session was the freaking disease. <laughs> But you're right. We came to that cavern and had the two the two gas sleeping, which we managed to just sneak by after some discussion on whether or not we should kill them or just leave them be. And we're like, yeah, we'll leave them be. <coughs> Fortunately, I was uh, surprised, honestly. I, I yeah, I, I was murder. too. I actually was too. I, I thought about going just sneaking up there and, and just you know taking out. I actually was surprised Brand was one of the ones who because as a uh, devotee of the Raven Queen, you know, this sort of thing is uh, rather offensive to him. So, you know, I was a little surprised that, that actually he he decided to, no, vote for, don't, don't. But he did it for tactical reasons, because he figured that maybe if we made a lot of noise, if we woke him up, we didn't kill him on the first shot, which in D&D is a pretty good possibility that you're not going to automatically kill them uh, on one shot. So I thought ta- it was tactically sound. Um, I mean, the, we really haven't bumped into too much uh, beyond them, though. So I remember we went beyond them. I'm trying to remember what. I'm trying to remember what we got be- after them. Oh, it was the garbage pit. Mm-hmm. Basically, the garbage room, the room that's full of all sorts of just disgustingness. Mm-hmm. Uh, Riley found a magical bag. <laughs> Oh gosh, that's right. Uh, <laughs> I found I found more blood so close. Fortunately, it was not enough blood to trigger me, as my character has a has a hemophobia, which is let's a fear be of fair. Uh, it wasn't enough to trigger your character. It's very easy to trigger Carol. You just mentioned how she hates cats and yeah, it's a backseat. You know, yeah, see, there you go. She got triggered. Yeah, right there. Just mm-hmm. went off the rails. Oh, 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 Carol, no, not to that cat. <coughs> I don't Is that a Maltese? Hate, I don't hate oh, cats. It was a Maltese. Hey, hey, hey. You know, two of my pirate crew members are cat folk. And my character's having a relationship with one of them. So I don't hate cats. A love-hate relationship. More <laughs> hate than love. No. <laughs> it's easier to kill a cat if you're in bed with it and it can't escape when it's Oh, it's bigger. easier for it's it's it nine times. times. Yeah, nine times. Yeah, it's easier for, for her to do it to me too. Uh never mind. That's digression. All right. So I said we found the trash room and we explored there for a bit. Uh I said we found a magic bag. I found more of the clothes for, uh, the dress, probably from uh I can't think of a name. Um what the hell's the name of the far the two farmers there? The the scaries. Scaries. Oh, it is scary. That's right. Mm-hmm. So the lady is the, the wife. Um, but then we then I I think there wasn't anything there to fight. We actually didn't have a lot to fight this week. Uh, oh, oh. which was nice. Uh then we found this panel of like loose dirt that had well, it was it wasn't really loose dirt, I guess. But it clearly had been a panel that had been of dirt that could be moved. So Brand and I, we basically took oh, out shit. that dirt. What? <laughs> Go ahead. Keep going. What did you forget? <laughs> no, no. It's what did I remember? Oh. I remembered that I have a wonderful art teacher who taught me many things, but apparently not how primary colors mix. Oh, yes. But that's, <laughs> no, that's to come. That yeah, was come. pretty hilarious. Uh, yeah, so basically when yeah, Bran and I dug it out, it led to this secret chamber that had a waterfall and uh, basically the waterfall was right in the center of the chamber and the, the, it was based, the water was falling in a glowing blue pool I, with something in it is glowing, not the water, is, the water's water. Although I forget, it's fresh water, right? Fresh water is the waterfall. Salt water is in the pond. That's right, which is weird, which is really kind of weird. I suppose right technically there. it's brackish water because it's mixed, but do with it what you will. But anyways, it was clean. 
and I needed a bath. So I went, I went skinny dipping and the PCs, every, my fellow party members were all nice enough not to notice that I have a friggin' tattoo. On we're nice tag. enough to avert their eyes. Yeah, exactly. The lady showering in the room. Exactly. But, uh, and I think Ernie also dove in too. And that, you know, it, it, actually what we found out is when we went under the waterfall, it actually had a calming effect that uh, reduced. <sighs> so I'm so disappointed. They could have got rid of all my dread. It could have. But I rolled a frame one because that's how I roll in this damn game. They also didn't know, also, also Brandon knows something else that was going on with my character either <laughs> at that moment until. I'm trying to think of what, I don't think any, if people basically made camp and things. So we stayed there overnight. Got a we all long took, rest in and we took watches. watches. And when I got up for mine, I felt terrible. Uh, so a certain Miss Fortitude say from, I think it was two sessions before that, or was it three? Two or three sessions before that, uh, <laughs> a few. Finally, he finally came back to bite, bite me in the back, literally. And that was fun. And 30 years, I've never had a character that had surgery performed on him in the battlefield. Never had that happen. And I tend to be pretty lucky on not getting diseases, but not this time. So <clears throat> it's, what the hell was it called? Um, sewer plague. Sewer plague. Or which, fever, one or the other. Which basically goes off the exhaustion scale. So it's interesting. It's, it's, it's all sorts of freaking bad. But hey, you know, why not? I have a friggin' insanity. Why not add a disease on top of it that could kill me? <laughs> and I think that's that's about it. I mean, that I said it was it was a very interesting session. And there was a lot of, I thought, a lot of these really good role play and such. Um, and no fights. So it was kind of probably a break we sort of needed. Because I'm pretty sure that whatever is up ahead, whenever we find those those townsfolk, it's going to be uh, it's going to be pretty friggin' horrific. So, and there'll probably be lots of blood, which will trigger my character. Calm down, Kara. Uh, yes, uh, last Thursday oh. was a uh, a culmination episode where we took a break from the horror, and it was quite a silly episode. Uh, uh, mostly thanks to Carol and her laughable failed saves. Um, yeah. Oh, wait, I'd I say the only thing you missed are the red spores. Um, oh, wait. Yeah. Well, oh, that's right. Because they were further, they're further in the room. And I, I actually didn't have to deal with them. But you're right. No, they were. You didn't. <laughs> no, uh, but Riley, Riley did. Oh, yeah. So that that's right. The color. So Riley got basically. But he made, we don't have to talk about it. We don't have made, to talk about he it. He made the fortitude save anyways <laughs> to resist their effect. But he was covered in the red powder. So he goes into the water and and Kyle said about how, cut you know, when he stepped up. in, it, the water turned green. And I'm trying to figure this out. OK, so now I have an art degree, folks. So okay, I'm trying to figure out how the hell the water can freaking turn green. Me, uh, mute her right now. <laughs> All right. You can't Guys, mute me. Guys, oh, we won't spoil that, but let's just. <laughs> yes, we totally will. Someone. That's all right. They were very right and was rubbing it in some stupid <laughs> player's face. And <laughs> turns out that that player was right. And in reality, uh, it should have been. Although, water... magical world. Wait, magical wait, 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 wait. Actually, technically, the water probably should have just turned red. Because there's a glowing blue light, but the water itself is not doesn't have a color to it. So the water just picks up whatever environmental fat. Oh, so I don't think it would have been that purple. Guys, check out the cred campaign last Thursday if you're into <laughs> some laughs and uh, if you're into uh, finding out all the dirty things that I'm going to do to it. It's obvious that these players are screwed, and I have set it all up while making them laugh and have an enjoyable time. Yeah, Brand's but, turning into something. Riley's losing his Riley's losing his mind to that tablet. And I don't know about Merrick. Merrick, you haven't really done anything to yet. He hasn't been around that long. So his time is a coming. Yet. His time. It is a coming. <coughs> but before the, the calamity to... falls down, we gotta talk about Saturday night. Yeah. Calamity. Uh side A, side B. Side A. Side yeah. A. Oh, Scott was there. 
He was late. <laughs> oh, it figures. He we forgot. love you, Scott. Uh, Calamity Side A. These guys, we've all figured out now that they are in a post-apocalyptic world. Uh, they started out in a stone bronze kind of age in, well, you know, it looks like a mountain, but now that they've discovered it's post-apocalyptic, eh, who knows? Anyway, uh, they were banished from their homeland and they headed off to the fabled ancient city of Yore. Uh, looking for a cure for one of the player's sisters who uh, has suffered a malady and she is still in a coma. Uh, these guys have had to dodge what are called whoppers, uh, mutated dwarven individuals that carry large sticks and are quite proficient with them. Uh, these guys uh, headed there and were very close when they discovered uh, essentially a sewer grate uh, and heard some movement inside. When they did, uh, they decided to add fire to the sewer grate, and it caused an explosion blowing apart an adolescent whopper whose head landed near Jesse's character. Uh, these guys uh, were about ready to become engaged with some whoppers. Uh, needless to say, the explosion chased them off. They then fled to the city of Yor, Y-O-R, uh, and discovered that it was set in a mountain valley. Uh, they found more manhole covers, uh, but then entered the city, finding a large statue uh, that they could not make heads or tails out of. Yor is covered in skyscrapers, but it is not New York. It is... May or is the name of the town. You had to lift it up. Sorry. Mayor? Mayor. Uh, these huh. guys began their exploration, found a few more statues, one of which was a real human being uh, who led them on a merry chase down an alley uh, where Scott's character, the monk, uh, pursued it into essentially a hotel room. Uh, meanwhile, down below, his associates discovered fast zombies because it was the day before Halloween. Uh, this fight did not go very well for them. Fortunately, they were saved, saved. By, by a zombie celestial dragon aka falcor from the never-ending story came in and luck of the die the dice give up the dice taketh away uh managed to careen into the horde of zombies uh the party then had to scamper up the fire escape into the room uh where more zombies were trying to break in they think uh, and the zombies were attempting to climb the fire escape. Uh, the good thing for them was most of the zombies are stupid, one of which was smart enough to understand how to logistically use the fire escape. Uh, let's see. Somebody was hanging out the window at one point in time. Uh, Peck Peck uh, has still miraculously survived because he avoids hanging around Rob's character. Uh, but these guys are in the middle of essentially a dead metropolis searching for a cure. Uh, only one of them can read and write some. Another one can read a little. And the other two are functional idiots, <laughs> which is awesome. Uh, there are a lot of things to find in your, and I would love love to tell you uh, one of my favorite objects that they may or may not find in your because uh, hilarity will ensue. Uh, these guys last time found essentially a shotgun and I'm just dying to do some wisdom rolls to see <laughs> if they shoot each other or uh learn how to use a shotgun but oh uh, that's that'll be fun gotta make sure yeah. the barrel's clean first oh they right. uh, look down there and just make sure it's all good you know it's nice to hear player knowledge versus character knowledge because as soon as i describe this item they're like no no 
Not going to touch it. <laughs> <laughs> that's like that's like me with a um, deck of many things. I, I, I agree with that thing. I'm like, nope, I'm not drawing. Nope, because every time I draw from it, it goes bad. Yeah. Every time. But uh, if you imagine a, a large population center, you know, like New York yep. or uh, Indianapolis or Boston, uh, there are a lot of things there. Uh, a lot of cool things. Uh, all they've found right now are indigenous personnel that they can't really make heads or tails out of, as well as fast zombies and fucking Falcor, the zombie celestial dragon. Uh, wow. so it should be a good time for those guys. There's one spot I really hope they find because I really want to give them this item. The but they're going to shelter. They're going to have the nuclear earn. warhead. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Who, who Jesus. saw the second planet of the apes? Uh, <laughs> but uh, that is calamity. There was no Margu on Sunday. Uh, there oh. will be a Margu this Sunday, I believe, and they may get out of the Undermountain there. But uh, Thursday is calamity. What, or Saturday, if you're interested, is a one shot. It is a wilderness adventure, and I think it's. Third level, yeah. Third level. Wish I could play, but I'll be at a convention. Yeah. Well, there you go. You're not playing. I'll convention. be playing. Back to you, you can Kyle. go. I mean, Back there's nothing me. stopping you to go from going. So, well, Frank, that sounds like you're you're being a little misleading about who's hosting <clears> this <throat> next uh, section here. I am indeed because uh, the misdirection and the calamity and the cred campaigns is just ripe to be plucked boys and girls one of the favorite things dms like to use is misdirection because what your players think is not always what they know uh, a recent review on one of uh, my adventures in fill bar offering pointed out that uh, the title summary said that there was a plus one sword in the grave when in reality it was a shield and <laughs> The reviewer didn't understand that, but that's that's okay. I pointed out that peasants, among other people, tend to not know what they are talking about. So with this particular section, we're going to go ahead and talk about misdirection as used by the DM and misdirection from a player's perspective. So I'll be asking the questions. I'll be answering a few of them, but I'm going to let these guys do most of the talking because <clears throat> still a little hoarse. So uh, I will put it to uh, you guys. Uh, I'll start with Carol from the DM perspective, because all three of us are DMs. Yep. Ish. Using it as the plot line. Uh, your friend is your enemy or your enemy is your friend kind of thing. Uh, what are your thoughts on using it as the major plot line for a campaign? Oh, my God. I just actually I just heard this very thing used in a podcast i was listening to ba was that basically, murder hobo inc no no Man, we don't need to mention it no yeah. but it but it's but it is relevant <laughs> i thought it was it was absolutely it was brilliant the way it was done um you tell well basically the gm had gotten there was it actually it's just like you know you have your v your a plot and your b your b your b players or b characters so He'd been, but they were running this adventure path, and he came up with a whole B side or a B plot um, that he that he wrote a whole homebrew for and everything. But he also got one of the characters, one of the players, to agree to do it to actually be the big, the big, the B B E G, essentially. And it wasn't revealed until I, I listened to the episode today, and it was the last episode uh, they just released it, and. Oh my God. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's phenomenal when you get that kind of a plot twist and the guy, the, the player did a really good job at it too, because no one guessed the, about this, but that was like some serious misdirection. And absolutely. I think it's, I think it's really cool. Um, it totally plays on the paranoia of your players. Um, I, that is going to say, and I think the longer you're put, the more experience your players have, I think it actually starts working against them for things like this, because I get paranoid about 
everything and start coming up with conspiracy theories about everything. What? I did. No. To- I totally did. No. A camp- totally did a campaign one. I had like about five or six different conspiracy theories. You know, and how oh, and, and start them all the way as a player. Trick. You start thinking about all the ways you know that the GM is fucking you over or is misdirecting you. But as a GM, yeah, I know. I think it's really cool when you can pull a point when you can actually successfully pull something like that off because then it's a really exciting for your players plot twist that they weren't seeing, they didn't see coming, and it really gets them to have to think on their feet. And as a and from the player's point, I'm sort of going from poor points here. I, I always find when I have to think on my feet and I get the unexpected thrown at me, it's just, it's so much more exciting and so much more fun to play. So that's, I guess that's my take on it. It just Kyle? makes it, it spices things up. There you go. Kyle, same yeah. question. Same How do you use it as a plot line? How do I use it as a plot line? Oh, gosh. Uh, I mean, to be honest, it's kind of a hard question without adding some definition to it and sure. uh, yeah we're watching between the roles again and here i am i want to define something real quick before i even go explaining it and talking about misdirection um and kind of what that entails and misdirection as we're talking about it used in a plot line is a trope something that your players expect um and when you use misdirection you can't, uh, I think as a DM, you can't just um, bring it out of nowhere. It has to have signs. It has to be built upon, um, especially if we're talking about a plot line here, because, um, I mean, it's such a main integral part of this story um, that you guys are kind of building together this, this campaign. And so, you know, oh gosh. Well, I get, I got a question for you, Kyle, on that. So wait, so are you saying that there should be hints and signs that there is some misdirection going on or, because like I said, in that, that example I used, there was nothing because the player did such a good job playing it, but it was in conjunction with the GM, uh, you know, giving him that plot. So it was a total well, I mean, shock. Out of I would blue. say listening to the, I, I suppose in that situation, you want to re-listen to a podcast like that and just re-watch it, re-listen to it. Let's see if you can find any. This is the villain. Oh my gosh. He would burn that body. And if we had a You're chance, right. he incinerated it with a fireball. We'd never had the chance to question it because it was burned to a crisp. You're right. And come to think of it, when I think back as to his actions uh, from the other episodes leading up, you're right, because there were things he did that led to him being in the position he needed to be in to basically fuck everyone over. Yeah. So you're right. When you use misdirection as a plot line, and if you are, um, I'm not going to say blessed because it's very annoying have being recorded for all your things and being like, shit, I, uh, oh, yeah, no, I said this this one time. You're do locked I correct in. that or do I lock it in? <clears throat> but uh, it's kind of a mixed blessing on that one, but where if you are recorded and you do have that twist and you make sure that you do provide subtle hints and they do not have to be obvious, they could be, yeah, well, your boss just incinerated, again, let's use the incineration thing, your boss incinerated his enemy. You don't even have the opportunity to question him, but he was a powerful knight who was literally <laughs> going to cut the head off of Bob. Thank goodness he incinerated him before he had the chance. And that way, when someone comes back to re-listen to that, knowing what that new twist is, it's suddenly, oh, and everything kind of pulls itself together. Uh if you don't record it, then sometimes it's better to just write that in your little notes section as a DM. And maybe you make a nice little monologue over it. But when it's a pot line about misdirection, uh, make sure to pepper your uh, plot with hints as subtle as they may be. 
Um, and then, of course, if your players guess the misdirection, you don't have to change it. And just, no. oh, it was a twist because he was the good guy, actually, the entire time. You know, if you're going to devote the time to a misdirection, even if your players figure it out, follow through with it. Um, otherwise, you are taking enjoyment both from yourself and from the players who figured it out and actually, yeah. See how it plays out. See how it plays out. Yeah. I mean, let's be honest. If your villain has been beside these players level one to level 18 or 15, they're going to catch on that maybe they've been found out and they're going to prepare something a little bit more treacherous in mind if they have to rush their plans along. I, I always like to use Demolition Man as a good example for that because they needed Dennis Leary dead in order to maintain power. And as soon as Stallone figured it out that Wesley Snipes was going after Dennis Leary, everything turned around. Because remember, Dennis Leary lived below ground. Oh, that's right. Okay, yeah. And, I and didn't they see Wesley. the movie. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Sorry. I tried to show yeah. Janelle that and she was just not interested in it. Yeah. But Sorry. I wanted to get to the rat burgers. I know it was a good La movie. Rata. So yeah, it, it was a good movie. And I always think of that one when, okay, you know, the enemy you thought you had isn't. So it's it's kind of as Kyle pointed out, if you're gonna do this, young DMs, you have to see it through. Uh now, granted. It's really cool to surprise, you know, that big moment and surprise everybody. But, you know, there's a lot of reward in, oh, I, you know, I, I think we're barking up the wrong tree here. Uh, and then actually being able to figure it out and then uh, backtrack and realize that patron or the Duke or whoever was uh, funding you. Uh, you were just doing his dirty work, and you guys have been the assholes the whole time. Oh God, that's like ah, uh, Dennis Leary asshole. You know what? I got it. I got it. I got a perfect show for that too. Was Alias? I don't know if you guys ever saw it, but basically, she was a spy for what she thought was the CIA, and then midway through, you find out it wasn't the CIA, and she was working for the bad guys. Mm-hmm. And that, I mean, that's exactly your point right there. And, yeah, uh, and, and it phenomenal is twist. Yeah, because <clears throat> if you can hide it long enough, it really kills. I mean, it, it's just a killer. Uh, to a lesser extent, we'll use it not as a plot line, but as a side piece. Uh, two weeks ago in Cacophony, the group came into a cheese festival, and our two PCs were selected to be on the tasting board. Uh, with some clever roles, they thought that one of the judges was being paid off. Uh, <laughs> and they, I, I, it was a whole lot of bait that they didn't take. But you could tell that both of them were like, this guy's an asshole, he's cheating, because their roles dictated that one of the other five had the winning cheese. Uh, and it was really funny to watch because I knew... He wasn't going to be cheating, but I left a lot of telltale signs, you know, mm, 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 mm. and uh, they were just certain uh, one of the judges uh, was paid and uh, they they did not take the bait. Uh, and when they talked to the guy, they discovered that, you know, this is this is a nice guy. He's super nice. You know, he's won it before. He'll win it again. It's like hating Tom Brady. Hate him all you want. He's still the goat. Uh, That's and I, right. I, and, and I hate him, but I, you know, I I don't hate him so much that I won't say, yes, he he is most likely the greatest of all time. Uh, but as a DM, you you try and feed on their fears, so you always want to listen to the table uh, and just kind of move it in that direction. Like Carol said, yeah. you know, she's worst case scenario. She's conspiracy theorist. He really is because, because I mean it a because it is fun. It actually really is fun to think up where you're going, where I think you're going with this game. It's sort of like it's, I feel like it sort of becomes a chess match. 
Mm-hmm. It was a lot of fun to try to figure out uh, campaign one and who, like, what the deal was with the various characters. Um, so, well, yeah, now, I mean, I guessed a couple things, and there were things I definitely did not get right. Yeah, but that but it was, adds to was, the enjoyment. Yeah, it really did. So the next question to both of you, <laughs> we'll start again with Carol, is okay. uh, not as a plot line, as a side piece. So let's say mm. uh, Kyle's captain is actually there to feed them to the old ones, uh, or the deep ones, <laughs> rather. Uh, and he is just... He, <laughs> he, he is just that would, are we enough. talking about the captain, that the, the ex-captain there that I uh, got fired? Um, as uh, oh, Frank, that as would... Frank Sr. on the Margu campaign says, shut up, he's writing this shit down. So, uh, Carol, in a a, a campaign... That seems like a short, major whatever, plot line, not a side piece. Well, you know, maybe, <sighs> it, maybe it's a side piece if you just think he is. So, how do you use, how do you use this, not at a cheese festival, but somewhere else? Oh God! I mean, I, to me, it's a it's definitely a lot easier to come up with a uh, a twist like that. That's you know, though. All right, all right. So the example I can think of from a game I played in, not here, but oh, years ago, we at sometimes it's it's fun to do that to friggin' basically as a screw you to your players too, if somebody does something to trigger such a twist. You mean so, be a player? What's that? <laughs> so years ago, we had this. We had. A, I was in a group with this player who he wanted to play a samurai, and originally the GM said no, and then eventually the GM relented and said yes. And so you had clans Worst and things like that. Worst mistake of his life. Hint yeah. number one, right there. <laughs> oh no, no, no! But but the thing of it is, this was this was the game that we actually we actually did not have a lot of fighting in. It was mostly all role playing and us freaking try to react to situations, and it was phenom- It was a phenomenal game. But I remember we were in we were in this town, and there was a big fair going on, and there was this big prize that somebody would win at the end of the day. So this other character won this prize, and um, he was it shows a bag up. Of holding? No. Oh, well, I don't know what it was supposed to be, but this is where the twist comes in. So he shows up. Now, this town is being run by a rival clan who basically wiped his out, except for him. He was like the last one. So what does he do to be an asshole? He shows up in his full clan regalia to pick up the prize. Of course, all his enemies are sitting there going, okay, so then they changed the prize. They changed, they gave him a mansion, absolute freaking mansion, servants, everything to works. The only problem is it had the he had to pay taxes on this mansion because it's a mansion of like a hundred thousand gold pieces a, a year. And if he didn't. <laughs> We don't know. We didn't play that far to figure out what the consequences were going to be, but they weren't going to be good. Either he's going to end up rotting in jail or, or dead or something like that. Probably rotting in jail. Dead would have been too easy. So, I mean, and that was basically, it was a, it was a twist that the, the, the GM threw in right, there, <coughs> right then and there based on actually what the character did. I think, I think I, I like that to make, you know, use such twists like that for consequences for PC actions. Nice. I, uh, I am a firm believer in making your PCs, you know, having consequences if for suffer. things they do, you know, and good Carol, things too. Carol, Sorry, Carol Stumpy uh, brings a good point. Oh, fuck. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Are we saying that? Are we talking about Eileen. Taryn? Yeah. yeah, but wait. Come the, on, Eileen. But wait, there was, <laughs> the, but there was no twist in that. I knew the thing was going to blow up. No, because you still think Bushmill is the bad guy. No, 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 no. Me, the player, knows he's not. But Taryn, Tar- well, that no, it's because what happened to Taryn, it twisted him in her mind. He, to her, he is the bad guy. He He killed a whole lot of innocent people. I know, I know as a player, he's not the bad guy. 
Io was the bad guy. Are you, you know, sure? he, 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 well, yeah. <laughs> I, I yeah. get the hesitation in her voice. I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean, he was running the town. I mean, there was, yeah. There was, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. not then yeah. you better fire up the campaign. Well, no, we put evil back in the box because if we didn't do it at that moment and it wasn't him, the world would be fucked right now. Who took the box? I don't actually I don't know because Taryn was in no shape to take the box. She was pretty she much, didn't have a leg to stand on. No, yeah, she has Whoa. wait, wait, that's where you're wrong. She has a leg a to leg. stand on. She's got one. Okay. Uh Kyle, uh, what do you think? Not as a plot line, <laughs> but as a side piece. As a side piece? Uh well, you got your two different side pieces where it's player background side piece misdirection and of course just player encountered side direction um my advice for the background stuff uh as a dm what i've found so far is i enjoy being surprised as much as the players are going to be interesting and so uh all of my players know this because i've talked to each of them uh and anytime they had conflict in their background in some way i said i have a d6 i'm gonna roll it depending on what the number shows up is just how bad or how successful something was um carol uh, all sixes right a cut a uh, cult out uh, uh uh to be destroyed and i said well here's a d6 and we're going to decide just how good of a job they destroyed that cult of yours and I mean, several things can happen. It could have been that her cult was completely destroyed and her background has no bearing whatsoever. So you end up having to create a, a background stuff that pops up for her um, that's totally and completely unrelated and just forces the player to just think everyone's out to get them when they're not. Or it could be, no, the cult survived and they are. Well, yes. it's pretty and obvious. To kill you. There's, it's pretty obvious that. Uh, uh, here we the go. Leader, this is the misdirection right here. <laughs> is it right. really? I mean, you did throw hints that you did throw. I mean, yeah, maybe it is a total misdirection. Maybe mother is not mother, but mother is somebody else. Uh, I, I will can't wait to find out. I really hope it's her, because then she will be. She'll probably be coming to kill me. So. Nice. If I don't die in six days or whatever, maybe I'll just make that linger because it can roll success and just never quite get rid of it. I think my favorite misdirection so far from my end is just literally screwing with the players. <laughs> Case in point, Margu, or not Margu, uh, Calamity A-side, uh, or I'm sorry, Calamity B-side, when they rolled, uh, they were attacked uh, by some amphibians, and I had, there were two sides to the town. Three of the PCs are original uh, members of the town. The fourth member is a, an immigrant status, uh, far superior in intelligence, etc. cetera. But uh, when the cloud of war cleared, I had, one player for each side roll a percentage. Uh, and in my notes, I had written, this is how many people are going to die from Ooh. their side. And uh, David, <coughs> poor bastard that he is, <laughs> rolled really high. And he was very proud of his role. I think it was like a 92 or something. Oh, God, it's like a Cthulhu game. You don't ever want to see a 92 in a Cthulhu game. Yeah. He, he was thrilled, and uh, Carrie uh, rolled an 11. And I, I looked out of my notes, and I just busted out laughing. Uh, oh, and then no. when I made the announcement, 92% of your population is dead. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, wait, it's, I mean, I don't know if that's misdirection, though. That's just. Well, we all know that high rolls are good unless it's uh, Cthulhu. Cthulhu. And yeah. it's ain't Cthulhu. All right. I guess that's a good point. Well, wait. How about how about David with his... Was it? His dad. His dad. Yeah. I, we rolled uh, the 10. He rolled what? D10? 11. 
Yeah, a D12. He wrote the uh, D12, wrote the 11, thought it was, that was great. Until it, took, he... it took his father 11 <laughs> minutes to die. Right, that is this direction. Now. That's right. <laughs> so th these are the things uh, we wanted to cover on the DM side. And of mm -hmm. course, we've got to give equal time to the player side. Uh, we all know uh, and maybe have even played some illusionists. They are the ultimate in misdirection. They are the mages who, whoo, you know, do that. Uh, but <laughs> players will often come up with plans uh, for success uh, based on misdirection. You know, you throw a stone, hoping that everybody goes that way. Uh, that just they happened. Don't, they don't fall for it. And, eh, you know, it goes bad. So, Carol, uh, give us a player perspective on misdirection whether they are successfully doing it or they try it and fail horribly that's where the dice shows come in i mean i i technically did succeed on that two sessions ago against the um was it two against the what the hell that's this what that was the use the use the use snake the thing remember it was it was going gonna go after ernie when he was at the tablet, and then I yeah, basically I was like, oh my god, I gotta get its attention. Threw down a pile of rocks, which did get its attention. So it there right there that works. Wow, it's almost like I watch these shows and come up with the idea. I know, oh, right? Oh wow, it's really <laughs> cool that you were inspired by that moment. And then then I also furthered it by saying, mentioning telling him, Oh my god, he he's just so curious about your tablet and that trigger that I'm not really sure why that made him so mad but that made him mad enough to literally try to choke the life out of me that was fun anybody who knows you would like to choke the life out of me I'm guessing. <laughs> no 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 okay no. but in this case your it misdirection worked. worked yeah it worked so, do you have an example of where you choked one I, I mean, a lot of times, it, a lot of times when it when it fails, it, it's not so much your character that gets it. It's just that what you wanted to do and draw their attention, you know, away from something else, it just doesn't work. So usually it doesn't have, I think it's actually for your own personal character, if you're doing the misdirecting, a lot of times it can, it, if you actually succeed, like in that case, it can have worse consequences for your own character than if you fail. I mean, I suppose sometimes, yeah, GM could could absolutely take a failure to mean that your misdirection, like let's say you're throwing a rock over to the other side of the room. I'm pretty sure I've actually, I know I've failed on that one, but I don't remember what the consequences were. Hit the I guy in remember, front of you in the face? <laughs> no, no, it just, it just basically, I think what happened was I tried to do that once and I didn't, I didn't roll high enough. So basically it, yeah, it just kept doing what it was doing. You know, it didn't, it didn't, it didn't change its actions. And I so find failure, that's usually but happens. not bad failure. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, a really bad failure would probably come and rip my face off, but. Kyle, you know. same question. Uh, question. Again, a little explanation. Uh, 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 there has to be two parties in this generally, or there's two types of misdirection you can really do as a player. True. One is DM involved, and one is tricking the DM and being an asshole about it. And paying for it later. <laughs> <laughs> paying for it later. The latter one can be extremely fun, and you should probably know your DM well enough before you attempt to do that. Um, otherwise, you might just draw and avoid playing an illusionist altogether because, you know, uh, a, a lot of misdirection, especially, really does have to be communicated with the DM. Uh, and case in point, Carol's knocking rocks over in the lair. Um, it's like, well, what, what are you trying to do? Just get well. You knew what I was trying to do was get its attention. Yeah, get its attention of off of her or of Riley. Me asking Carol, what, what are you trying to do with this distraction? Okay. And then the DM, as an impartial judge, asks for a role, and from that role decides, okay, this is what happens. Uh, in this case, you know, strangling one of your players was the best thing for me as a DM. 
Um, it was as a player, as that player. Also, I mean, I wasn't too worried because I got good stats in both acrobatics and athletics. So I knew I could had a good chance of breaking free. Maybe. Uh, well, that is what happened. I broke free. Let me finish, Carol. Gosh. Um, and that's DM involved. Yeah. I'm going to trick you, DM, and we're going to roll dice and it's going to be random to see how it works. Uh, and the other type is um, convinced on building this story, building this line, defining the character, and making your DM believe, okay, that's what my character would do all the time. Um, my very first character, uh, uh, which I played with Frank, was an illusionist wizard. And illusion did not really work all too well when first playing this character. Uh, so eventually uh, the gnome turned evil and started summoning <laughs> demons. And Ooh. had we continued on that campaign, uh, we were uh, not far off from summoning up an illusionary demon and sending it after people and not telling Frank what it was and then just walking away <laughs> with the loot. Um, which I'm sure, uh, <laughs> judging by Frank's wow. face... <laughs> We almost and, had that and, situation and, you know, at one point. Everybody wonders why I'm such a dick. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's why every townsperson you meet is an asshole. I know every single one. It's amazing yeah. how the whole world is just full of assholes. We well, you guys are murder hobos. That's true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you guys aren't paying taxes. You aren't working hard to build this community. You guys are freeloading shitheads. <laughs> But uh, the thing with um, fooling the DM is that there is a great possibility. And I mean, absolutely great. Top where notch. <laughs> the DM has no idea what you just did. And things don't turn your way regardless. <laughs> and um, that just can absolutely <laughs> ruin a moment, too. I mean... I can so, think about I can think about and I'm sorry this is that uh, that big game that big juggernaut of a game where you had Jester okay critical role where basically um, you had game? basically there was it. there was a hag that cursed one of the players into oh. being the, the being the goblin people who watch the show will know exactly what I'm talking about mm -hmm. and they had to basically get the hag to remove this curse. So talk about, you know, that sort of twist. Basically, she found this like, it was like, it was like something you put on food that would, uh, in basically, it was Dust a charm. of tastiness that. Yeah. So, uh, oh, you know what I'm talking about. So wisdom saw saves. Uh, gave disadvantage on wisdom saves. Yeah. Yeah. She wanted something from the hag. And she the wanted hag. Her. Yeah, hag yeah, the hag failed the wisdom save and on a modified memory, and so she convinced the hag that the hag had agreed to a deal to do something for free, uh, and got away scot free from it. Now, that is a point where the player has tricked a DM. They both know each other long enough, and yeah. they know what's going to enjoy, and letting that slide is something that he chose to do. Although uh, that's a good thing for all DMs to do, because at some point that hag is going to come back and well, it never did pissed. in that campaign. It yeah, <laughs> never did in that campaign. I think, but I think sometime she, somewhere. I think she kept sending her periodically. She'd send her cupcakes, and she'd write her. I think you are which, correct. It's friggin' hilarious. Mm -hmm. I love. I love. For, by the way, for the record, I love players that can pull off that stuff. Uh, that's sort of what I want to strive to be. Yeah. When I grow up, uh, and a lot of that of is misdirection. Yeah. Um, relies strangely enough on, well, not strangely enough. I suppose if someone trusts you, then it's really easy to trick them into you know, <laughs> falling flat on their back when you say you're going to catch them. Um, uh, it's a lot of trust uh, between players and DMs. Um, and when you have it, it's absolutely delightful. And when you don't, um, <clears throat> just being cautious about it and being open about it, I think, is a thing. And with my players in my campaigns, I know some of them. I don't know all of them very well. 
Uh, Carol talks so much. I know her life story at this point, and I feel comfortable enough that I could absolutely fool her and trick her with misdirection, and she'd be fine with it. And, yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, if she feels the same way, I hope she doesn't because I'm a new DM and I can't handle. It. No, I told no, totally. You son of a bitch. <laughs> There's, I think you know me well enough to know that I mm-hmm. love a really good curveball. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I don't like, I, I, you know, even if I figure it out, I honestly kind of want you to change it up. Sure. And that's the more you know. Nice. <laughs> uh, that brings us to the close for the night. Uh, these guys have given you hopefully a couple, more than a couple of good ideas on how to use misdirection in your campaign, uh, be it as a player or as a DM. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to hit us up. Follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our YouTube archive. Uh, if you want to shoot shit about D&D, join Aww. our Discord. Uh, you can check out our audio-only podcast. You can check out our store. Shit will be going on sale in December because, hey, we don't want to make money. We just want to make people happy. Uh, uh-huh. Don't forget, if you need custom dice, check out at Pirate Dog Dice on Twitter. Uh, they can make some fine stuff or just yeah, ignore you. Uh, and if your game stinks, spice it up with a little bit of adventure sense. Uh, come in 60 different flavors, not including the holiday specials. Uh, don't forget their shine Holiday system. specials? Yep. The they, Grinch uh, pouch. It's they, uh, amazing things. <clears throat> it smells like roast beast, uh, a flugel flam organicorn, <laughs> uh, and the last crumb that a mouse couldn't eat. I was going to uh, say, then, I think think that by the way i think that sale is act i got an email today from threadless i believe is ours mm-hmm. so i do believe the sale has started now yep or so, very soon tinyurl.com slash rpg swag uh, also with oddfishgames.com uh maker of the shine system as well as the wildly successful how to rpg with your cat they are working to fulfill uh, everybody who helped out, including me. So, uh, folks, that being said, please join us Thursday before uh, the other big show. Uh, We'll give you two hours of uh, laughter or head slapping, and that is cacophony. Folks, for all of us here at Murder Hello Inc., we appreciate your time. We'll talk to you later. Kiss and wave. Bye, everybody.